Hello there. So it is my great pleasure to share with you my integration of my first and here I come into an issue straight away gathering ceremony ceremonial gathering exactly what terms to use elude me at the moment maybe it will become clear if you go on so what happened is I was taken somewhere yesterday um, with my two guides you're very familiar with now Ahmed and Reshma and what happened is there was a gathering of people so I'm going to share a little bit about the gathering then I'm going to share about the effects on me and how I am integrating the experiences that I had yesterday evening so it was a Saturday night when this all happened and of course in some countries it's a traditional time to go out and celebrate celebration that's the word celebration it's our Saturday night celebration in Bengaluru so we have all the privacy we require because we're in someone's home and first of all there are six of us and we play the mind now this is a game that we play on the octagon for the retreats not always but when I'm called to offer it we play it so it's a most unusual game so many games are all based upon competition between the players the only way to win in this game is all the players have to combine their intelligence and their resources as one and the other three is the game itself so we were playing that game and then the others arrived and so we put the game away and we moved to a slightly different location in the space and thus things began and after a while someone else turned up so it very much follows the pattern of a nature's medicine retreat in the octagon that there's a time some people arrive some more people arrive and then someone arrives a little bit later sounds oh so familiar to me so for the sake of anonymity I will be using the names which are given to me in the moment these are not the names of the people concerned so first of all I want to introduce you to Loki and his concept who I am let's try Loki and his um, the word is struggling to come to me uh, what Loki and his partner and I'm going to call her Mara so we are playing the mind game when everyone else arrives and the energy lifts it goes into a slightly higher gear quite quickly and after a short period of time I begin to become aware that this, cere this celebration is going to be featuring the green medicine and it's going to be playing quite a significant role and I realize that now I'm in Mother India that's an inappropriate term so in future I'll be referring to the green medicine as ganja it's my own personal private term that I use for myself anyway so I'm working with the spirit of ganja throughout the evening and people order in and they eat and other people don't order in and the table becomes full of all sorts of things for people to eat who didn't order in and so all the practicalities are taken care of in that way now what I am wanting to share with you more than anything else is the nature of the conversation and the nature of the people and one of the people did speak and I'm going to call him master of the strains so he was the last to arrive so when master of the strains started to speak one of the things he mentioned in his family community setup Ganja is a regular ceremonial part of life and it obviously varies here for some people this is something that is done occasionally for some people this is not a practice it's they're involved with at all and others it's a real regular practice so that's what Strain Master shared that in his communities it is with and that includes people he went to primary school with 
as well as his family, as well as other friends. It's one of the main contributors to the way that they socialize and celebrate. So that was interesting. And then we started to go deep. We went very deep. We went into spirituality, Hindu cosmology, religion. We went into agriculture, plants, cooking. We went into so many other subjects too. In fact, we actually went into the multidimensional universe and people's ability to access this. And there were two people, and I feel like I want to call them the, the magic twins. So when the magic twins started speaking, one of them actually, after a while, he produced his phone and he showed me this image of a particular cosmology which involves an awareness of the existence of, I believe it was 12 dimensions. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's the approximate number. And it shows the dimensions and it shows where we are here and where we can go up, where we can go down. And it's very clear that we have a lot of practices concerned with accessing and giving gratitude to these different planes of existence. So that was very interesting indeed for me. And at a particular point, Reshma did give me rather a firm nudge and a smile and a few words to imply, well, this is something you're familiar with, isn't it? And of course that's true. And I felt for my very first encounter with this group of what I would call extraordinary people. So what I noticed about them is I noticed their high levels of intelligence. I noticed their creative and particularly the magic twins more than anybody else. But they, it, this applies to all of them. They all have the power of being the storyteller. They're all great storytellers. And as well as that, the magic twins also have this quality as well as being storytellers. They are clearly men of knowledge. And I can tell that that's because they've got into deep relationships which the Jamaican Rastafarians call Sata. In fact, one of the twins spoke to me about his relationship with the Rastafari and his great appreciation. And he explained that there are people who worship Bob Marley. There's, this, there's a Hindu tradition among some Hindus that Bob Marley is worshipped as an avatar of Vishnu. Now how we start to go into some deep cosmology, so I'm aware there is Vishnu, there is Brahma, and there is Shiva. And these are the primary emanations of the source, as I understand this. And out of these, each one has many avatars. And so one of the avatars of Vishnu in much more recent times in the 20th century Bob Marley is hereby recognized as being one of the avatars of Vishnu. This will give you an idea to the extent with which I was experiencing cascade initiation throughout the entire evening. And as all of those who go to the octagon for nature's medicine retreats knows, one of my attributes, one of my qualities is I am instructed to leave the space. This serves two purposes. The personal purpose is I go away, I am somewhere else, gives me an opportunity to adjust, to contemplate, to begin my primary processing of all that I've been encountering so far in the evening. Something else goes on. Because I'm not there, the dynamic between the group shifts. And always in group dynamics, in the octum, and here in Bengaluru, there is always the same need. People need me to be absent as well as present. It might sound a strange thing for you to hear, but it's true. And that is because I notice that the way I am, the quality of my energy, it attracts and amplifies and accentuates certain kinds of conversation. If you know me well, you know I go deep, I go fast. And I'm just fascinated to explore. As well as that, people need to go light. People need to go into humor. And to be able to do that, sometimes it's better if I'm not there because then people can be more uncensored, especially because it's their first experience of me. 
they've never set eyes on me in any of their lives any of these people so that's a little explanation about that the evening continues and we bounce we oscillate between fun between conversation about plants and cuisine and indigenous cooking and I become aware that Kerala is a significant influence the state of Kerala there's a number of people that come from Kerala indeed Reshma herself and her ancestors they all come from Kerala too this is a big connection so the language of Kerala is Malayam now this is perhaps the most exciting thing to share with you I am so surprised because when I go to a foreign country I expect to immerse myself into the conversation by not understanding a word at first and gradually over a period of time over weeks and months I pick up more and more understanding of what the words mean and gradually I'm able to participate now the shock that I had to realize is if I was in the north of India the primary secondary language that sounds a bit confusing everyone's got their indigenous language what they were brought up with their mother's voice that is the language of your state but then you've got the language which is the universal language which you can all speak from the different states in the north it's Hindi no question in the south it isn't and guess what it is to my shock and surprise it's English so the entire evening from what I could make out was in, was conducted in the English language this is something I had no idea was going to happen so I was actually quite shocked about it surprised delighted and it did mean I was able to contribute really quite early on and what would happen is that Ahmed would bring the attention of the group to himself he would then share some snippet of information about me now Armen knows me very well, he has known me since 2012 which means he's known me for 12 years our 13th year of friendship so he's able very easily just to throw in a few keywords here, a few ideas and that can move the conversation in certain ways the people here are all very very interested in what we call the brown medicine which is also known as ayahuasca a lot of interest in this medicine there's also a lot of interest and practical experience with the mushrooms, the fungi that's clearly part of the spiritual practice of this location but above and beyond our primary plant medicine of the celebration is the ganja so I am, I've been dieting what I would call the local ganja which is beautifully indigenous it is grown outside the sun is providing the light source there's no indoor cultivation going on here and when presented with the little glass jar it looks a bit scrappy it doesn't look very neat little bits of stalk, little bits of powder lots of seeds so from a conventional aficionado's perspective this might not look like it's going to be very exciting wrong this is a very powerful, subtle, gentle, considerate, quiet, kind medicine and sadly I don't know the name of this particular strain I'm going to give you what I've just been given because I'll explain I'm still in the medicine from the previous night in the Ganja so what was very exciting for me is the conversation turned to water and one of the magic twins spoke about the river the local river to Bengaluru he says for, thus, for those of us who live here we get all our water from and he names the river so what I'm doing throughout the entire evening I have with me my little black book and I have with me my pen so what I'm doing is the people are speaking laughing, joking, eating, smoking and when something is said and the guides and the helpers give me the nod I stop what I'm doing, I pick up the book, I pick up the pen and I take as many notes as I possibly can about the conversation this is part of why I'm here this is part of my divine purpose to be in India the chronicle I've been creating since I was in my twenties continues and it's a whole new chapter this is the Mother India chapter so getting back to the point, looping back, pausing for a little water 
the magic twins explained to me that in the Hindu religion the people all worship the rivers every river has got a spirit a deity a goddess so every river has got a goddess and people give appreciation gratitude and worship to their water source now can you imagine how grateful I am I am so grateful when I hear this because I realized something I've waited a while to share this with you I want you to be really clear if you're watching this film Mother India the culture of the humans living here it's unbroken and it goes back for 25,000 years plus in the UK it would be struggle to scrape together 2,000 years of a indigenous culture because we have got ourselves trashed so many times we all know that our shamanic heritage was the final remnants of the shamanic heritage in the UK was trashed by the Industrial Revolution but more than 2,000 years before that the indigenous Druidic spiritual practice from the Druids was trashed by the invasion of the Romans so we've had so many disruptions in the UK to our spiritual life we've been broken and dismembered in so many ways but despite all the invasions which have happened the mountain ranges to the north and the sea to the south has protected Mother India from so much more depredation and because this is such a vast vast civilization we're talking here the Vedic civilization is so vast basically all these other peoples and cultures came from different parts of the world and they attempted to put their stamp on things they invaded they colonized they took over they created their empires whatever they did to their kingdoms the Vedic civilization continued just under the surface unbroken because it's unstoppable why is the Ved Vedic civilization unstoppable nothing can touch it it's because of the mantras as I'm listening to people and discovering what they do every morning we do our ablutions every morning we do our mantras we do our prayers these are all common practices and one of the magic twins is sharing me just very briefly and I do this mantra and he's just chanting it for me so I can get a slight flavor of it what I'd like you to understand please is throughout the entire evening because let's face it I'm on the autistic spectrum I know it have been for years but I've only found out very very recently it's easy for me to become overwhelmed by a lot of information my primary strategy for preventing overwhelm is writing down the notes and this is preparing for the chronicle as well of course that's the other use and then taking a little time away just to ground process that's all helpful I'm also working with the tobacco spirit as well as the cannabis spirit together in the smoke the tobacco spirit is all about adjustment to change in circumstances all that's happened to me since I got on the aeroplane in Heathrow Airport is change change and more change so time out is good but also working with the tobacco spirit is extremely helpful for me and my personal journey so I want to just to go into a little bit of a look about these um, strains and the strain master so at a particular point strain master reveals what he's brought along and it's got a name and it's called permanent marker he doesn't talk about the country of origin of this one whether it's an Indian origin or other origins because strains are obtained from mother India from London from California and from Canada at least four different sources my first experience of permanent mark and my general attitude towards dieting the um, ganja is to create my own smoke with very very tiny amounts of the ganja spirit and the main overlay of the tobacco spirit which is for adjustments I mentioned earlier that's the way I operate I make very small smokes they don't last for very long and that's the way I operate now because I'm in with a group of people and I feel I want to be a little more inclusive than that when strain master offers me the spliff containing the permanent marker I make an in the, the guides say do it so I do and I restrict myself to six inhalations and at the beginning of the second inhalation I'm starting to savor the flavor of this particular ganja and 
as soon as I see these words, the taste of the ganja actually comes into my mouth. So it's a slightly astringent and it's got a very slightly aromatic, slightly cheesy, slightly planty flavour, a little bit of, um, what's it, yeah, astringent, um, warm, comforting, pleasurable. Those are the words that are coming up for my integration. So that's the experience I have at that particular time. And I am suddenly propelled. I don't go down, I don't go up, I go in. I go in deeper, much more. And I start to realize part of my function here is to listen. Part of my function is to be in conversation. And part of my function is to actually become invisible and simply be the witness to everything that's being said. And in such moments, I have some wonderful experiences. I'm called to speak about Mara. Mara spoke about the banana. She makes it clear that where she comes from in Kerala, every part of the banana is used, not just the banana fruit, but the banana flower and the banana stem. Well, that's a revelation in itself. And she then takes me onto a whole deep dive about cuisine. Um, Kerala cuisine, Malayalam. So the language of Kerala is Malayalam. And I want to point out to you that it's a palindrome, Malayalam. If you were to spell it in reverse, it comes out as Malayalam. I find that's beautiful. During the evening, Ahmed interrupts to say, there are three Malayalam films that have been recommended. And the third one is about someone who goes to Saudi from Kerala and he is put as a goat, a goat herd. This is a true story. The film has been made of it. I'll get to see it at some point. He's been turned into a goat herd and he has no human company and they don't feed him. He has to eat what the goats eat and live like the goats. And this goes on for a considerable period of time. And he takes on the qualities of the goat. He has basically a goat plant, sorry, a goat animal spirit initiation experience which takes over his life until at a particular point that initiation is completed. This is a shamanic perspective. And then he's rescued from that particular location and he is freed and he goes back to Kerala. And that's the reason the film is being made. Otherwise, there would have been no film and no story written. So that was shared. So I'm gi giving you a little bit of a flavor. And I want to just I want to summarize. I don't want to give you too much in the way of detail. So I want to go, ah, but I have to mention one other thing. Later on, they pass around the vape. It's a big vape, about that size, size of my hand. And I don't, I don't partake of vapes. The guides, you do. So when it was passed to me, I said, thank you. And I did my full exhalation, which goes something like this. and a very slow, deep inhalation, which takes four times as long as what I just did, but I don't want to take up too much time. And when I've done that, it is a really deep exhalation, and I did really deep breathing, strong, deep breathing for maybe two minutes. I found myself standing up, I found myself moving, and the next thing I knew, there's been this music playing all the time. A beautiful playlist has encompassed the entire evening and I have my, myself moving to a different part of the large room I'm in and I'm dancing in a space of total freedom, wildness and I have no concern about anyone's opinion. I am being myself, free me. So that was beautiful, really lovely experience. So here I am the following day, I'm perceiving the remnants of the medicine. We did have the banana to diet as one of the foods we had on the table yesterday evening. So today for breakfast I made the green banana and boiled it. So I'm on a dieting a plant, the ganja, dieting another plant now, the banana. More to say about that in another film. Let's not get too carried away, Keith. Just bring it down. So what I would say to you is my conclusion is I've been invited to 
and I've participated in what for me has been a personally a massive initiation. There's so many processes which are going on in terms of integration, but what I can gather so far is as follows. These people, they are very intelligent, they are very bright in their energy, they're very creative, they have a great deal of interest in a great diversity of things, they're all very deeply spiritual, they're all chanting mantras, they're all praying, and they all have a connection with their spirituality, whether it is perceived as a religion or otherwise. Great creativity, and there is so much love being shared. I felt I was initiated into the degree of the space of love that I have the pleasure and the joy to experience with all the people that come to the Octagon for the retreats. And yes, the next one is from Friday the 6th to Sunday the 9th of September. And if you look in the description, there is the email address and you can simply email that address and I'll give you the full details about the next plant medicine retreat in the Octagon in the north of England. So I've done that a little bit. My primary feelings are love, gratitude, excitement, enlightenment, aware that I am learning so much and this is my job to keep the sufficient sobriety going at all times that I can take the notes because all that I'm learning from these people is priceless. They have this unbroken spiritual tradition that goes back for more than 25,000 years. So how much can I learn here? More than I can even conceive of. All the love to you. All the love to you. All the love to you.